Hello, I'm Ralph. I'm Paul. And I'm Dr. Jen. Welcome to Awesome Astronomy on YouTube. If you like what we're doing in this series, please do hit the subscribe button and like the show. And in our first YouTube video, I'm going to answer a question we get asked all the time. How does the sun continue to shine? And if you don't actually care and just need something short and sweet for your homework, it's because the sun is a giant nuclear explosion with enough fuel to keep exploding for another 5 billion years. Next! Now, anyone who knows the answer to this question is going to say that that's a bit simplistic, and of course it is. But if you only want the skinny so you can know the answer and move on with your life, that's accurate and good enough. But if you want to fully understand it and have a couple of minutes free, or as the dude would say, if you're not into the whole brevity thing, here's the best way to get your head around it. Just think of it like this. All over the Milky Way, and in every other galaxy, vast clouds of mostly hydrogen and helium swirl around for millions of years. And where the clouds are most dense, gravity takes hold of it and tries to compress it down into a tight ball. If enough matter is pulled into these tight regions, it will explode into life as a star. This happened in the early days of the universe, it's still happening all the time now, and will continue to happen for another 100 trillion years. If there's enough gas in those dense regions, that immense gravitational pull will squeeze and heat up hydrogen atoms. In the very centres of these dense balls of hydrogen gas, temperatures soar to millions of degrees, sending hydrogen atoms whizzing around so fast they are unable to resist fusing together. And the sun is just another star. It just happens to be our nearest and life-giving one. So a star and our sun can essentially be seen as a chain reaction of millions of billions of nuclear explosions in a tight region of space. Gravity continues to exert that inward pressure and all that gas. That inward pressure is also what causes the star to have a spherical shape. It's pulling all of that matter towards the middle of the star equally in every direction, just as those nuclear reactions are pushing outwards equally in every direction. This creates a perfectly spherical balancing act where hydrogen atoms fuse together to make helium atoms and release a vast amount of energy in the process. And because there needs to be so much hydrogen in order for a star to burst into life in the first place, this process will continue for millions or billions of years until it runs out of hydrogen to burn. At that point, with hydrogen being scarce, the gravitational pull will compress the star's core and try and force the helium atoms together. Now they're harder to fuse, but the immense pressure and even higher temperatures will make it happen. This helium fusion will be short-lived, lasting thousands or millions of years instead of millions or billions of years, as the star continues its struggle against gravity's pull. Helium fusion is more energetic than hydrogen fusion, and in response to this greater energy source, the star puffs up to become an enormous, bloated, red giant. A more massive star, like Betelgeuse, will puff up to beyond the orbit of Jupiter, these more massive stars can repeat this fusion renewal, fusing heavier and heavier elements, each phase lasting for a shorter amount of time, until they produce iron. Iron spells the end of the road for these larger stars. Iron fusion absorbs energy instead of producing it. With nothing left to fight gravity, larger stars can press down and then rebound out in a massive explosion that rips it apart, called a supernova. The smaller stars are unable to fuse anything heavier than helium, but they too will bloat into a red giant star that will gradually engulf its inner planets. And this is the fate of our star, the Sun. In our case, the Sun could even swallow up the Earth, and it will certainly get close enough to make it too hot for life here. But don't worry too much. Our Sun's got enough hydrogen to fuse happily for around another 5 billion years or so. And there are no catastrophic events that any sane astronomer can see disrupting the life of the Sun for the next few billion years. So, it's only what we do to the planet that's likely to have an effect on whether we can survive on Earth or not for the next few billion years. So fast forwarding 5 billion years, as our Sun expands towards the end of its life, 
the gravitational pull of the core becomes less effective on the outer reaches and that outer atmosphere will be coughed off into space as a majestic expanding gas cloud called a planetary nebula, while the core itself continues to glow hot but cools over billions of years, leaving behind a cinder of what was once a raging nuclear fusion inferno that had a planet in its orbit where life formed, evolved and developed intelligence that was able to figure out what had gone on before and what will happen in the future. But it only took us 200,000 years to develop that intelligence and progress from Homo erectus to modern humans, from the Stone Age to the Industrial Revolution to the Space Age. So what will we be able to achieve in another 200,000 years, or even a few billion years, when we definitely have to get off this planet? And if you liked this video, Awesome Astronomy is also available twice a month in podcast form. Check out our episodes using the links below. Remember to hit that YouTube subscribe button and help us out by liking the show here.